showing today is a technique to try to simplify the process of a bridge style lateral meniscal transplantation. So you have basically a graft station to prepare the graft itself and then a drilling system to try to make a socket that's the appropriate size for the graft. So I have a lateral meniscus allograft. I've released the synovial tissue so that we've well mobilized the meniscus and we have just the anterior and posterior horn attachments. Okay, so we basically fixate the graft to the jig such that the line that you see going across the, the station here goes through the horns of the anterior and posterior horn. If we take this number one cut, you can see the numbers there. So basically what that's going to do is make a semi-trapezoidal cut because it's got a five degree medial angulation based into that. If you want to check that, you can put your saw blade down, make sure you're not going to injure your horns, and then you can flip your meniscus and actually put the number three on and just make sure that you're not going to injure your horns on either side before you make your number one cut. Okay. So now we have our medial cut. We'll take the number one off now, and now we have our number two fence here. This is for our horizontal cut. And what the recommendation is, is that you place the fence horizontal to the graft station, and then where the posterior aspect anterior horn, anterior aspect posterior horn, would bisect each other, and that set that height of that cut in about that area. Okay, we should be good there. Okay, so then we can just loosen up the number two fence, and now we're going to make our lateral cut. So again, that same fence that was number one, you flip it over, and it's now it's number three, and you have to put it on the appropriate way. So we flip our meniscus out of the way so we don't cut it. We make our final cut here. Okay, so now we have our graft, okay, in a trapezoidal fashion with a five degree angulation on each side, so it's a little bit wider at the base. So now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna put the graft in place, it's right in the appropriate spot. We take our graft holder, pass our graft through it, and now our graft station also holds our shavers. We're gonna first use our number one shaver right here, which is just gonna chamfer down the edges of that graft to now contour this into a tubular graft. Now we'll take number two, and this will finish off the cylindrical nature of our graft. So now we can take that graft, and we have a, a 10 millimeter sizing tunnel here, so then we have a press fit 10 graft, okay? So now you have your graft made, and so basically we're gonna start here, the, the scope is gonna be in a little bit more of a far anterior lateral portal. Here's that accessory portal on the lateral side, just making down just enough of a trough that you want your, your drill guide to sit flat on the tibia. Okay, we'll open up that, uh, that portal so that we can get our drill guide in, pass the guide down, pass it over the back of the tibia, and just make sure that it sits flush in that, in that trough. So we'll lock that down. The nice thing about this system is that it is fairly reproducible. We'll put the guide in, the pin in. So here's that guide pin to a set depth. Take that out put that laser line rod back in, tap that in, <clears throat> 10 millimeter reamer, ream to the depth stop. We'll take that graft out. Here's your guide rod. You can use that to, to measure and also make sure that your graft is your appropriate. You see that five millimeter back wall that we have? That's uh, the way the, the graft is engineered and designed. Take our chisel to open up that slot, open it up a little bit more just to make sure we have an easy slide. You want to have a passing stitch through the back of that. We said that, you know, posterior one-third, uh, two-third, pass your stitch however you like. So here you are now, you passed your graft, pulling the graft in, in there. You have your bone plug in the slot. It's an interference fit. It's a, it's a press fit. It does not need an interference screw per se. And uh, then you fix the periphery of the meniscus as the, uh, as the surgeon prefers. Mm -hmm.